go. Right, okay, so I've got this subroutine to start with. Okay, it is just pseudocode. So it's the ones that have got logic in that we do it with. What we've got to do is we've got to identify the blocks. Okay, so always the start of the subroutine, and we're just going to label these with letters. Wherever we've got decisions, we put a, a label. We're not actually bothered about the steps that are performed. We just want to follow the logic flow. All right. So if you've got like three or four actions and they're just like steps, then we're just going to label those as one block. Okay. We mark the end ifs. We mark that because it's a, another decision. That's just a block. Some of these will be simple, some of them will be complicated. Depends on what you've got. Okay. I've got another decision there, uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, not very good at the alphabet. H for that block, I, J, and K. That's my first job. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little graph. And that graph is just going to show how we get from A to K. Okay? So do these in Visio because they, they can just copy and paste them to work Word and get them all nice in Visio. So if you start with A, put it in a circle. Right, so that's just the setup code. So we'll always, immediately after that, do B. You've got to put arrows on. Again, in Visio, that's easy. You can just do it on the line style. Right, so there's a decision here. If that's true, we do this part. If it isn't, we go down to here. All right, so we show that on the diagram. So we can either go, right, it's not true. <laughs> Let's just go straight to D. Or we do C. So we're, we're physically showing the branching that's happening. Okay, that's what these little graphs are for. When we get to D, we move on to E. There we've got another decision. So we either go off and do F, or we go to G. Now this is a bit different to the last one. Okay, because if that was true, we do F. If it isn't true, we've got another test. So if we've done that, we will drop all the way down to I. So that ends up at I. So I'm going to come back to that in a minute. Uh, so at G, I've got another decision. So I'm either going to do H or I am going to go to I. So I now know where I is on my diagram, so I can join that F up. So F ends up there. And H does as well. Okay, that's what I'm showing the graph for. I then finish off and I do K. Oh, J and K. Yes. Now, what you should be able to see, uh, just at a glance on this diagram, is no matter what routes we take, we will finish properly. Okay, and that's what we're doing. We're showing that all the paths terminate. There's nothing. If we were to have something where it went like that, we go, whoa, we got a mistake. We've got a mistake with the algorithm. That's what we're trying to show, that the algorithm is correct. Okay. This is why you only do six. Because they will take a little bit of time. Okay, so that's the first bit. Then you make a little table up. And you say, at each one of the decision points, and you can see a decision because there's two lines come out of it. So you can say, at B, and then just say, why did we do C? So if we look back, so... C, if, up, press. And you can say else, D. Okay? And then just do that for each one. So we've got an E. Uh, what was E? Left down. So we do F, E, left down. So you're explaining the algorithm effectively to the person. You're saying, right, this is why we do the branching. So F if left down, uh, G if not, okay? And then at G, because that was another decision, you can see it's a decision because there's two lines coming out of it. 
So that was if write down. So if it's write down, we go to H. So H if write down, uh, and it was I if not. And that's it. There's nothing else to explain. So you can just make a little table up for that. And say uh, decision, point, actions. Something like that. So pick your six nicest bits of logic algorithms and do those diagrams for it. Keep it in the circles, the circles look good. But as with everything in Visio, do one circle, get the font the right size, and then copy paste them. Use the dynamic connectors, and I always prefer the nice curved lines for these, they look good. So you've only got to right click on a dynamic connector and you can tell it to go curved, can't you? And you can put the arrow heads on them. Okay, that, that's all you've got to do for the white box testing. But it's important because it's one strand of your testing for your testing marks. Okay, to show that you've got technical testing. What I suggest you do, where you've got your algorithms, put that with the algorithm. So where you've done like your object stuff and you've described some of your algorithms, put this test in, say, right, okay, white box testing of, and then just put it with it. Okay? Right, I'll upload that to YouTube.